Hello, aspirants. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to FT Plus. In this uh, channel, we are going to provide you different topics of uh, current aspect linked with general studies. Now, in this video, I am going to discuss about current trending topic of environment. So, the discussion of this topic is about Wildlife Protection Act, which has been amended by the central government, and a bill which has been passed by Lok Sabha, lower house of parliament. And we will be discussing about its important provisions. To begin with, uh, you all know that conservation management of wildlife in India is carried out. All the measures are covered under the comprehensive law which government of India passed in 1972. That is the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So if you look at the kind of uh, the original bill which has been tabled, which tried to bring some changes and we compared with the actual existing act. So let us bring into this the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, the original law has following features. One is that in terms of control of wildlife crime and for this purpose, uh, there are punishment measures or punitive measures that is in terms of fine and also in terms of uh, imprisonment. Now, second thing about Wildlife Protection Act covers scheduled species. It covered, uh, covers scheduled species. As you all know that Schedule 1 and 2 has got highest protection where hunting, poaching are not allowed. Schedule 3 and 4 also have protection, but lower than that of a 1 and 2. Schedule 5 has a very special provision of vermin. Now, what is vermin? Vermin include those animals which uh, multiply very fast and cause nuisance to humans, like wild boar. So, there the provision has been laid out where the state government, with the help of central government, can bring animal to the Schedule 5 and with the permission with a license to kill, and those animals can be killed to control their population. So, schedule, schedule 1 to 5, that includes the animals, which are certain animals covered into that. Tiger, elephant, one-horned rhinoceros, different type of birds, reptiles, mammals, they are covered into that. And schedule 6, schedule 6 uh, covered the plants. Those type of plants, which require special protect, uh, permission by the government to cultivate grow and use commercially, like, you know, red vanda, then lady sleeper. So there's entire list is given there. So schedule one to six, they are the list of animals and plants, which are meant for conservation and management. And according to the threat level, the, it has been pro uh, protected in such a way, if anybody violate, they are imprisoned or pay fine there. Apart from that, the original act also covers the provisions regarding the wildlife uh, conservation and management uh, project, conservation and management project. I'll just give you a very good example, which you all know that Project Tiger. Now Project Tiger, which started in 1973 to control the crime against tiger, hunting, poaching, and at the same time, increase the population of tigers, notification of tiger reserves. That is all through Wildlife Protection Act. And you know, there is a special statutory body called NTCA, National Tiger Conservation Authority, which looks into tiger conservation. But at the same time, other big cats in the country, like Asiatic lion, common leopard, snow leopard. Now, introduction of African cheetah to Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. All this comes under NTCA. So NTCA derived power from Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Not only this one, Project Elephant, in terms of managing, conserving the elephants in the country. Project Snow Leopard, Project Ghriyal, Project Rhino, Project Asiatic Lion. All these are done under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. These are provisions, sir. At the same time, it also brings some institutional measure here. I have mentioned that 
one part is that NTCA which looks into big cats. But not only NTCA, under Wildlife Protection Act, there are other bodies like National Board for Wildlife, then Central Zoo Authority, then Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. Apart from that, it has also different posts of a wildlife warden, chief wildlife warden at the state level. So that is again covered into that. Plus you are also aware that it also has a measures for creation of national park, wildlife sanctuary, bird sanctuary, that is institute conservation. At the same time, zoo, zoological park, botanical garden, that is a ex situ conservation. So conservation of wildlife, either through national park sanctuaries and all, in situ conservation, where powers to notify given to the state government and the central government, or in terms of ex situ conservation of botanical garden, zoo, zoological park, captive breeding centers, have been laid out in the Wildlife Protection Act. Under this act, wild animals are the sole properties of government. And without government permission, nobody can capture it, keep it, and um, use it for personal purpose. It is prohibited under the law. This law also has a provision of creation of critical wildlife habitat, what we call core area, in case of national park, tiger reserves, and all this area. And it defines the rights and duties of a forest department, the officers, and the people who are around, living around such areas there, and their right to use forest in terms of getting the resources. Wildlife Protection Act 1972 not only create all these kind of mechanisms and provisions, but it also looks into another very important aspect that is the implementation provisions of international conventions and programs. Like for example, man and biosphere program in terms of biosphere conservation, right? Then other kind of a government obligation at international level that is being brought under this particular law. Now, one of the big problem with this law is that one is that six schedules, like those animals which are highly threatened, particularly endangered and endangered, they have been kept into schedule one and two. So we don't require two lists. We we can do with one single list. Three and four can be done on a single list. Another problem with this is that vermin, where the government with permission can kill and eliminate and decrease the population of animals. So that is again, a debate has come regarding the provision of vermin, like recently in Haryana about the killing of Nilgai. So that was an issue there. Third thing is that India has signed CITES, C-I-T-E-S, Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species. But site provision of Appendix 1, 2, 3, that is not in the original act. Invasive alien species and the spirit and control, again, it is not outlined in the original act. That's why government of India has introduced amendment to the existing law and want to bring some new provisions under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Let us discuss that. The changes. Uh, proposed in the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 through amendment bill Wildlife Protection Act Amendment Bill 2021 what government want to basically implement by such amendments and changes there so I'll go through it one by one. First is that rationalization of schedules there. There's six schedules which are already there. So now the rationalization part of it. So what has been decided that schedule one and two can become one list, single list. Schedule three, and four can become second list. Now schedule five, as I mentioned, vermin. This has been removed. Now the lot of debate has gone regarding this provision of removal of vermin provision under 
schedule 5 there schedule 6 that could be on plant the list 3 on the plants and then there could be another list here apart from this uh, kind of list there the fourth list that is list 4 can include uh, appendices of uh, sites that's the conventional international trade of endangered species that could be added here so there could be four lists one and two on animals right and third on plant and the fourth can include appendix one and two to control the trade of sample and specimen of wild animals and plants as per given the sites that could come into new list now what is another thing here as i said here it also includes the provisions of sites so same convention which indian government has signed now is going to be implemented under wildlife protection act now not only this uh, part of appendices of uh, sites uh, will become the part of it but also there will be a scientific committee to examine which type of animals and the plant have, have become threatened or because of over exploitation in the trade part of it. Then also, there will be also a regulatory body to approve trade of samples of plants and animals. So this was lacking in the original act, which has been now added here. So another big change is the sites provision, which have been now brought under the law. Now, third thing which I said here, ki vermin has been removed, but there's a control, control of invasive species, invasive alien species. Since uh, many of the alien species have spread throughout the country, and they are causing threat to agriculture other areas. So we need to take a strict kind of provisions to control such kind of a species. Fourth is that punishment in terms of imprisonment and fine has been made more strict. Made more strict. Another very notable thing is that there was a court case to Supreme Court and High Court with respect to the forest dwellers and other scheduled tribes and forest dwellers and the right to stay in the forest, particularly in the areas which are critical wildlife habitat there. So under this law, now it has reconciled with the Forest Rights Act, FRA, right, 2006, with the Wildlife Protection Act, where Gram Sabhas can determine the patta or the right in terms of part of the conservation of the part of a wild animals there. So that also has been now looked at by the government there. So that uh, those conflict in terms of wildlife conservation and in terms of human ownership of land and the right can be resolved. Right. So there's another the government has been trying to make under this uh, site uh, as a part of the amended wildlife protection part of there. Now you know that original act also had a provision in terms of declaration of community reserve, conservation reserve. Now conservation reserves, they are basically central government land, but now those reserves can also be declared by state government land. That also has been added there. So if you see there, there are some revolutionary changes in the Wildlife Protection Act, keeping the long-term impacts in terms of policies, programs, and everything. And this could be a question can be asked in the exam. So what you can do, you can read about all these provisions in detail by visiting APT Plus website and the material and go through all those detailed points in terms of UPSC prelims exam and the main exam. I hope that you all understood these areas and uh, please do subscribe to the channel. We will again come back with a new topic on environment soon. Thank you.